designed the same way. Um, and if the idea is to have a home that is autonomous, that can do everything on its own without us coming and really looking at the different parts and trying to select the right products uh, to have this interoperability, it's going to be a struggle. So that's why Matter comes as the solution to this problem. So not only from a user standpoint, so developers today, and I see that there are quite a few of you today here, uh, are also struggling with this. Uh, it's, it's looking to become a challenge today because basically if you want to develop a smart home device, you need to select the right wireless protocol, you need to certify it, you need to work with different ecosystems to have it be integrated. And with Matter, you basically, as a user as a, or as a developer, only work with one specific stack, which is Matter. As a user, you just go select the device. If it has a Matter logo, it will work out of the box. So that's the promise of Matter. So if you look at the different technology landscape, uh, we can see that today we have multiple transport layers. So going from wireless to wireless, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, ZigBee, Thread, Z-Wave, Sub Gigahertz, BLE, Ultra Wideband, NFC. All these transport layers today at NXP, we have them, we can work with them. And then if you look at the home control ecosystems, it's, for example, Mi ecosystem, smart things from Samsung, HomeKit, ZCL, Weave. Uh, we have different home control ecosystems. So it's great for users that would like to use a specific ecosystems. But the problem that these big brands, they have this silo approach of providing one solution that keeps the customer really stuck with their ecosystem and they cannot look elsewhere. Um, and the promise of Matter is basically to standardize all of this um, and remove this complexity of having different, having to work with different ecosystems. So Matter basically is going to cover SmartThings, HomeKit, ZCL and Weave. So working with different voice assistants, so it's actually transparent with the home control ecosystem. You can just select whatever voice assistants you would like to use from these brands, these big brands that are part of the, the CSA today. Uh, and then if you have an application or accessory that is, that is coming with a Matter logo, it will work out of the box with these different ecosystems. So this is the promise of Matter, as I said, for users and for developers. It's basically to simplify, um, to simplify everything, to standardize the process. Uh, as you can see, well, we're still keeping the transport layer, so we're not inventing a new connectivity protocol. We're building on top of it, so we're not really scratching everything that we, de we did have before. So it's an answer of a problem, a real problem that we have today. Um, and I think it's, it's a good thing that finally these brands stood together and decided to bring this uh, solution to us. Yeah, so if you want to define what is matter, so it is basically a unified IP-based protocol to securely and robustly connect smart devices with each other regardless of brand and across smart home ecosystems. I think it's very important to see these different words. So there is securely, which is very important in matter, uh, robustly, so the decision um, of basing matter over IP-based protocols uh, was very important as well. Um, and then the fact that it's regardless of brand and across smart home ecosystems is the fact that we're still leveraging all the investment that these big brands did on these ecosystems, but we're building on top of them and we're continuing in the same uh, idea of bringing interoperability in smart home ecosystems and increasing reliability for consumers. So having a reliable, robust network in the smart home um, where there is redundancy, there is products that are always connected. We're not, we're not losing connectivity. Uh, and then, of course, it will ensure security and privacy and will simplify development for things. So again, on the developer side of things. Um, today, Matter is led by global brands, as you can see here. So global consumer brands and as well as semiconductors. Uh, it's very important to, um, to remember that from semiconductors side of things, we not, we're not only bringing the silicon solution, but again, the software that goes with it, the entire ecosystem, so the pl development platforms, etc. cetera. Um, and it's, the, it's inside the CSA, uh, we have the Matter Working Group. So CSA is the Connectivity Standards Alliance. That is basically uh, the group of all these global brands that are sitting together and discussing the future of Matter and the specification that will go inside Matter. So. 
So if you look at Matter, one of the focus points, as we said, is simplified development. The idea behind it is to have standardization of lifecycle events. If you're going to add a new device, so everything from provisioning, onboarding, removal, error recovery, and software updates, it's all managed uh, inside Matter specifications. So you have the APIs that are listed that are going to be the same uh, over the Matter spectrum. So if it's Matter over Wi-Fi or Matter over Thread, for example, it will be the same API used all across. Um, we have a common application layer. So again, it's, I think it's important to notice that this is the, um, the, proto the, the stack, how it looks like. The transport layer is not going to be different. Uh, and then it's Matter is basically the application layer. So we have um, one common application layer plus data model. This will ensure interoperability, the simplified setup and control because of the standardization of lifecycle events. And then we have def defined the core operational functions and multiple device types. We'll go over this later. Um, we also develop Matter in a way that is secure using AES 128 CCM encryption with 128-bit AES CBC. Uh, and since it's a common protocol across device and mobile, so it's great. You can connect it to smartphones, tablets. Uh, it also allows it to be extendable to cloud. So if you want to connect it to a voice assistant, maybe connect it through the cloud of Amazon or the the other ones, the so Google for, or from the Apple cloud. So, so this is the list of the devices supported by Matter. So today we have the 1.0 and 1.1 specs. So you can find them on the CSA website. There's a downloadable link here. Uh, the different device types we support um, are listed here. So we have, for example, from lighting and electrical for different applications. So here's the list of the profiles. Uh, of these different device types. So depending on the device types, what are the applications we're looking at? Uh, so as I said, we have, for example, switches, controls, sensors, closures, HVAC, media, or generic. Um, and the idea is that you can select from all these functions and create your custom uh, matter device depending on the use case you want to develop, basically to have expanded functionality. So. If you have a product which uh, will have sensors and then control the HVAC, so control the heating cooling units, uh, it will be a composition of the profiles that are here and the profiles that are here, for example. So it's, it's quite flexible and everything is already specified to have these type of applications, so it's great. And the matter device steps that are in development today includes cameras, white goods, robot vacuums, energy management products, air quality control, smoke and CO detection. So I think as you can see, it's growing. We're probably going to be covering all of the matter devices that are expected to be a smart home. Uh, the evolution of matter will be over uh, a biannual release cadence. So future releases will cover new matter device types, some function updates. Uh, we'll look into continuous improvement efforts for what's already been released. Uh, we have a diagram shows as well what is in progress. All of this is managed inside the working, the matter working group within the Connectivity Standards Alliance. So um, I think it's very important to know that if you want to have uh, any products certified matter, you need to be part of this working group, the CSA. So, and the different topics are driven by member companies. So if your company is part of this group, you also have like alpha access to all of these resources and you can start developing with it. So what we need to remember is that Matter is IP based, specifically IPv6. That's why today the Matter transport options are either Ethernet, Wi-Fi or Thread. So, Thread is mainly used for um, lower data rates, sleepy end nodes, products where um, we don't really need to have them always on. And then Wi-Fi will mainly be used as a transport layer for applications that needs higher data rate and will need to be always running, for example. Um, and the plan is to have more IPv6 protocols added over time. So. Here we mentioned route to flow energy. Uh, we understand that today to provision any new smart home device um, that is using matter over thread, um, we still need to use a smartphone or a tablet, but the problem is no smartphone or tablet today 
come with thread, so that's why we still need Bluetooth Low Energy in these products, uh, which will be turned on in the beginning just to do the commissioning and then switched off. Um, so it's still matter over thread, but the BLE is just used for device commissioning. So this is only for matter over thread. For matter over Wi-Fi, it's okay. We can do the commissioning over Wi-Fi. The different smartphones or tablets all come with that, so it's not a problem. So this is an example of a matter network topology. Uh, as you can see here, so it's color coded, so it's great. So you have the end notes, the ones you see here. So usually there are thread end notes that can also be sleepy end notes uh, connected into the, th the thread network. Then you have edge notes, which are uh, the one you see here. So it can be matter over thread or matter over Wi-Fi. So these products are usually plugged in, so not battery operated. Um, and if they are matter over thread, they can also be used as mesh extenders for the thread network for more reliability and to increase as well the, the, red, the range of the thread network. Then you, can, uh, you have the thread border router, the one you see here, uh, which is used basically to connect the thread network to the Wi-Fi network, so it's a translator. Um, see it here, and as well you see it here, so it can also have a matter controller and a thread border router. So a matter controller can be integrated into uh, a pre-existing device such as voice assistance, for example. Um, then you have Gateway, which is what's going to link the Wi-Fi, the matter over Wi-Fi to the cloud. So again, to be able to connect to the different cloud providers. Then we have a bridge. What we call bridge is basically what we'll be using uh, to translate between the matter network and legacy, legacy devices. So what we have today in our home. So maybe it could be um, a Zigbee network, a sub gigahertz network. So non-IP based protocols. So we're still going to be able to use those. Um, and then we have controllers. So again, what, we, what we'll be using to do the commissioning, provisioning of the different products, and commissioner, uh, which are again, pre-existing products uh, such as tablets or smartphones that are used to do the provisioning uh, of the devices into the network. So now that we've covered the basics of developing with uh, Matter, the different devices, uh, what is Matter, um, I think it's time to look at the different platforms, uh, development platforms, Spry and XP, um, to work with Matter. So as an XP, we provide a total smart home solution. Uh, it's a complete for fit for purpose product offering. Uh, we have developed products with Matter in mind, with Matter specifications, such as the RW612 and the K32W148. Uh, we'll look at these devices more in detail later. So these solutions basically include all the building blocks from connectivity to security to processing, uh, which are three building blocks that we have all across the NXP portfolio. And our solutions, again, can be configured in numerous ways. So it can be hostless or hosted architectures. Uh, depending on the use case, of course. So as a trusted development platform uh, partner, we can, um, we're can we not only looking at the silicon, so we are a semiconductor company, but we're looking again at the solution, the entire solution. So we invest in software and tools, uh, plus and services as well. So when we are developing matter, we understand the complexity, uh, we, then provide examples, certified development platform, um, and different tools. So we'll look at that again later. So we have the different EVKs for development. We have an Android app uh, also to do the development on the phone, uh, and also multiple like code examples um, that you can find in GitHub, etc. And we are uh, in leadership positions in different IoT standards. So CSA, for example, the Thread Working Group, Wi-Fi, since we are investing in all of these technologies and we have products for this, so we are in leadership positions in these relevant standard bodies. Mm -hmm. And to build IoT devices, uh, it's not just connectivity. So basically, we want developers that work with our products to focus more on the user experience. So we try to enable them with more tools and examples um, so that they can focus on that user experience and remove the complexity from the design, the development, the software development. So 
that's what we're looking at. Um, IoT technology solutions. So today we're investing more and more in AIML uh, for these type of applications, for example, um, some like facial recognition, stuff like that. Audio and video streaming as well. So the tool developers can use this to drive the innovation and integrate these in their solutions. Um, well, an example of this, so in our demo, we also have what we call VIT or local voice control, voice intelligent technology that can be used um, in a local network, so not connected to cloud, to do voice command, voice control inside a smart home. So if you no longer have a uh, connection to your internet, you lose connection to your voice assistants, the Siri or the Alex or Google Home, you can still use the local voice control. So that's great. And we're also longtime partners with these ecosystem platform providers. We work with all of them uh, and we enable them as well with our boards to do certifications of their ecosystems um, on our platforms. So if you look at the matter example architectures, so we understand that there are different solutions for a smart home depending on the use case. Um, depending if you look at the device tab, if, type, so if it's a matter control, controller or a matter device first, then we would look into um, the processing power or performance that is needed. And then we will be looking at what type of architecture you should be setting behind. So it's not going to be the same, right, depending on the use case. So if we're looking more at a smart TV, then we're talking more of a Linux Android host. So the computing power is going to be more on the MPU side. And then how we would like to connect it, so either Wi-Fi, Thread, or Bluetooth. Um, this is also going to have been, we need to decide on that in the beginning. Um, so the processing power needed for a smart TV is not going to be the same as a light bulb or a smart plug, right? So it's not, we're not going to talk, we're, we're not talking the same budget here. So for this type of architectures, we also have wireless MCUs that cover the range. So either Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or Thread or three combined in a standalone architecture. So one MCU that covers everything. So all of these use cases that are supported by Matter today, we have the corresponding solution from NXP, depending on the architecture, the compute power needed, and the connectivity that we want to include in it. Yes, so this is how it would look like. So this is the, our complete portfolio of platforms for Matter. Um, these are the platforms we have decided on for Matter development. Uh, Basically everything in Live Blue is an XP technology, which is everything. I don't know why we put this like this. Uh, the ones that are in a green box are already matter certified. The ones that are in blue box, they are planned for certifications um, as platforms. So what I mentioned before, so the K32W148 and the RW612 are two wireless MCUs that were planned were designed with Matter in mind. So we were specifying these products at the same time as we were working with a Matter group to specify the Matter um, new, new specifications. So it was done at the same time. So if we're talking standalone, usually it's one wireless MCU running either Matter over Thread, which is the example of these two, K32W family, or running Matter over Wi-Fi, so MW3320 or RW612. So these are the family, like the products we'll be working on if we're talking standalone. So one wireless MCU running the stack and running the customer application. Then if we're talking more modular or integrated approach, so we're talking MCU hosted or MPU hosted. So MPU hosted is for more high processing power. So IDOTMX platforms running Linux or Android. And then depending on the connectivity, we're either adding thread or adding Wi-Fi, depending on the product we're looking at. Uh, and then for MCU hosted, it's the same, except that for the host, it's going to be an MCU, a high performance MCU. The IMXRT is our crossover family. So it's Cortex M7 running for the RT1170 running up to one gigahertz. And depending on how you'd like to connect it again, so either the IW612 for matter over Wi-Fi, or matter over thread, so we have both. The IW612 is a tray radio transceiver 
if you compare it to the RW612, it's basically a wireless MCU, but again, it's a tree radio, so we have the three standards protocols, so we have Wi-Fi, Thread, and Bluetooth. Mm. There is also another important part in Matter that we need to go over, which is the security. Uh, so th every time you see this logo, it means that this product has um, edge lock capability, a uh, security subsystem. And if you have the, the entire lock, this means that it has a full edge lock, so a full secure enclave on the product. Um, and if you don't have that, we have certified platforms with an external secure element to manage the different certificates that are needed for Matter. So the SE050 or the A5000. And I think the one platform that is complete and it shows all our technologies is this one, the entire one that is already Matter certified. You can find the examples on the GitHub and you can get the development boards as well, um, which has the IMX6 today. Uh, also, I think we have also the IMX8 and Mini with K32W148 and W8987 with secure elements. So all of the products for from the processing side to the connectivity side to the security side. So if we look at each architecture separately and we try to understand why and where each architecture makes more sense, uh, if we start looking at the standalone architecture, so what we call standalone is basically having one wireless MCU running customer application and the wireless software in one place. So it's a fully integrated solution. The idea is to have one solution that is low power consumption. It's a small size, so simpler hardware design. Everything is integrated from power management to the RF side of things to the MCU. So everything is in one, on one device. Uh, if we're looking for more low power for long battery life, low data rate, reliable network, it's going to be matter over thread. So the K32W family. This type of applications will cover sensors, actuators, lighting, plugs, sleepy devices mainly. So products that are battery operated. And if we're talking high data rates and ubiquitous connectivity, it's going to be more matter over Wi-Fi. So these two wireless MCUs for Wi-Fi is the MW320 and the RW612. And the applications will be more into lighting, plugs, switches. So matter over Wi-Fi for this type of application. Uh, and again, so if we're talking K32W, it's matter over thread, but we still need the BLE for commissioning, uh, especially in the beginning when we're integrating the device newly in a network. That's why the K32W, since it's a multi-protocol wireless MCU, is great in this case. Then uh, we have the hosted systems. So we call them RCP and NCP. We have two different architecture. RCP is mainly, we call it, it's a radio coprocessor. So here the wireless MCU or transceiver will be just running the wireless firmware. The customer application and the wireless stacks and drivers are running on the host MCU or MPU. Um, the idea is if you have the stack running on host, uh, it can be open source or portable. The host needs enough memory to run wireless stacks, so usually IMX or or IMX on memory side, we're flexible, it's not, it's not, it's not an issue. Uh, the benefits or advantages are an extended wireless functionality. We're able to manage all IP network traffic in one layer inside the host MCU or MPU, and the device can participate in multiple networks. Which, which also means also again we're, we'll be debugging more simple in a simple way because we'll be leveraging all the tools coming from the host MCU or MPU. Um, and then if we're talking network coprocessor, so here the stacks here are running on the wireless MCU side. The benefits are reduced resources required for hosts. So here we can have a simple MCU. We don't need an MPU um, because the wireless stacks will be running on the wireless MCU. And here we just need a UART or an STIO connection to communicate between them both. So lower power system operation, the wireless MCU can be running the entire application, uh, so the connectivity is always on. And then if we need to wake up the host MCU or MPU, we just send one command and it would work. So this basically separates the wireless functions from applications, so they're sold together, but kind of independent. So this is an example of an MCU hosted development platform, so RCP, what we call RCP. 
so mainly for the MCU site, we looked at the IMX RT family uh, because of the flexibility it comes with. Um, so the IMX RT 1060 is a Cortex M7 running at 600 megahertz. The IMX RT 1170 is a dual core, so we have an M7 and an M4. Um, and the IW612 here, it's um, a Wi-Fi transceiver. So here for it's a tray radio, so we have Wi-Fi and thread. So here we can use both. And the K32W here will add the 15.4 capabilities. The applications categories will be more into edge nodes, routing, or baseline border routers. So here we did um, a proof of concept of developing a border router running on MCU. So we don't really need a Linux system to run a border router application for Matter, and this is uh, the development platform we use for that. If we're talking Linux hosted development platforms, then we have certified the IMX 6, 8, and 9 for this type of platform. Um, and again, for the wireless stuff, it's still the same, so the same products. And then it's it's optional, but highly recommended to use a secure element externally for these platforms. Yeah, so I think we covered the basics for Matter. Ten minutes? Okay. So I think we covered the basics of Matters, the developed platforms. Uh, we have today different hardware platforms that we've just presented. So the EVKs are available online. You can grab the code from GitHub for all of these platforms that I just showed, um, build the source code, and then flush the uh, these development platforms and have a running network available to you. So I think it's time for Q&A. I don't know if you have any questions after all that we've covered. This one here, bringing the mic. Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, could you make a few comments about redundancy? You mentioned redundancy, redundancy yeah. at the beginning. And secondly, if there's any discussions about industrial applications for, for Matter. I think today Matter is mainly for smart home. We're not looking at industrial. Um, I think the closest will be EV charging, adding the electrical vehicle chargers, connect them to Matter. Uh, but apart from that, it's still very residential, very for IoT devices connected in a home. And for redundancy, it's mainly it's leveraging what we had already with Thread. So the idea of having routers inside the network just for extendability and to be able to always keep pinging the different sleepy end devices and checking that they are still part of the system. So it's basically leveraging what we have already with Thread. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi. Um, I was just wondering when you foresee Matter products make it into people's homes and really um, launch on the market. So there are quite a few already launched. Yeah. So the voice assistants do support Matter today. The different ones from Google Home, Home Nest. I don't know all the names. <laughs> They're there. They came on support for the matter. And the list of the companies you saw earlier uh, that are part of the CSA group and working with Matter are all in development with these products, so they're coming really soon. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. She had a question as well. There's a question here. There's a question. Next. There's one here, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my question is that how you address ethics? So I, f I feel like this is more of a question of either privacy or security, ethics on... How uh, you use data from other uh, companies, so, so connect with... So as NXP, we are providers of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't provide any cloud services, so we're not stocking any data. We just enable customers with the products to develop and to use, to integrate into their devices, so we don't really look at that.
So uh, you mentioned that matter is focused on the just home applications. Why not industrial? Uh, I think wireless and industrial today is still a very big question. I don't really think customers that are industrial today are looking into matter uh, or wireless in general. I think it's very still very specific. Um, well, I think I think they're still into more Ethernet based protocols, so into wired protocols and they still like they do have their connectivity their stacks based on TSN and stuff like that so I don't think it's a f it's a fun interest for them today so it was developed for smart home as well so the idea the focus point in the beginning was smart home so Thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a couple of questions. So first, first one is about the matter itself. I mean, I have seen many smart home protocols in the past. Mm -hmm. So how confident are you that this protocol will success uh, at the end of the day in 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 few years? Because I see that <laughs> this is still uh, the 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 architecture we have so far was already complex and what I mm. see is that matter is even adding a, an additional complex uh, layer on top of that. So we have more type of devices than we have before. So w with Red we have already enough type of devices and we have even no more, more devices different uh, one from another. Yeah, so... And, and sorry, and the second, yeah. the second question is about um, matter. Uh, so why an OEM of smart products, of smart home devices, that they have their own app and their, their own um, network management should uh, go for matter, which at the end of the day is promoting HomeKit and Google Nest type of uh, platforms to manage the home uh, devices. So in, in so that in that way they lose the control of their own devices. So a customer that buys a Smoothie uh, a curtain and then the system can accept any other uh, manufacturer so to combine the same mm. in your app. Why the OEMs? Um, that's what I, I, I know that there are OEMs that are really thinking that maybe matter is not the, the way they want to go. Yeah. So companies that have their own tools to provision and like do all the steps they have their own apps basically can still have their own apps there's no issue with matter on that the idea is that they can integrate their devices into these already existing ecosystems so if a customer has already a home pod in their place they can use it to control that other device if it's matter certified so I think that removes that complexity actually so if customers they don't want to invest into developing their own app they can say just use that's supposed your system. If they have it already, then we're talking about another like legacy wireless protocol. And if they're building a new product new product based on matter, then it will work seamlessly with their app or with any existing app. Uh, and then your question about how confident I am about matter, I think the problem we had with all the previous connectivity yeah. protocols was that every connectivity protocol was basically pushed by one high-tech company, so one of these biggest brands, right? So the problem was that every one of them was working in their like, silos, they're not looking at each other, they're all like just trying to expand their ecosystems, keeping the users stuck with their ecosystems, and today they saw that it's not working, that's adding much more complexity to the entire idea, and basically Matter was the answer to that, so bringing all of them together, sitting in the same room, deciding on how to define this, like. They're probably also leveraging what they learned from the different experiences, and that's how they selected these transport layers today to build on top of Matter. So I think like developers that be before had to work with different connectivity stacks, all that complexity is removed because now they're working with only one that will work all over the spectrum, so it's great. There was a question here, I think. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's kind of two questions. Um, 
And uh, you've been asked twice already about industrial Internet of Things, and I know you, you very rightly keep saying matter is about smart home, and that, you know this lecture is obviously not about industrial mm -hmm. IoT. Um, but I have to ask, how extensible do you think matter is to IA, IoT applications? I'm aware of a couple of companies that do have um, wirelessly connected solutions and are looking to integrate um, third-party sensors and looking for a kind of cross-platform, uh, cross-manufacturer standard to help ingest common data rather than having to build something bespoke to connect to every different third party. Mm. That's the first question. <laughs> <laughs> we answer this one <laughs> before yeah. I forget it. So if we look at matter on its own, it's extendable to cloud, right? So once all the data yeah. is in the up in the cloud, so we can download it later on and connect it to other subsystems. So I think it's still doable with the matter network, mm -hmm. still possibility. So th that's the, the idea of extending it to other IoT ecosystems. So I think yeah. I think it's a possibility. Okay, thanks. And then the other question was: you mentioned earlier that NXP doesn't have a cloud platform. Um, so my question is: is where does NXP stop and the and the cloud begin? Where's that line for NXP? And what does NXP do to help customers um, adopt their products? when the customer needs to connect to that cloud platform that they use? So as an XP, we provide the different products to secure the connection, to process the connection and to connect it. So what I said before, so security, processors and connectivity. Um, we're also a certified product authority attestation provider, so we can work with customers to create the specific certificates for matter uh, to identify their products. So we can we have our own cloud just for this, so security provisioning. So we can do that in production lines with customers, or we can do that over the cloud. So that's how we help customers. Um, Removing, by removing that complexity with the security for matter, so we are a PAA certified, and we can work with, I think we're the only semiconductor, basically, semiconductor company that can help customers with that, so. Great. Thank we you. can do that. You're welcome. Done. Well, thanks everyone. <laughs>